What's going on, everybody? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Eric. You're here with the investment channel. Today, I'm going to go a little bit more into details on how to sell cover calls on Robinhood. Um, this is something I've been doing recently. I haven't been, I, I'm not a, a expert on this thing, okay? But I now have a, a pretty good grasp on it. And, you know, and I want to just tell you guys what I've learned and, um, and go from there. Let's start with like the number one rule, okay, that I believe it is. Um, you got to find a stock that you're willing to hold. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're willing to hold, if it goes, you're willing to hold, if it goes all the way down it, or even if it goes really high, but before that strike price, cause if it did, gets there, then it's going to get exercised and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so the first thing we should know is what are calls and what are puts. Okay. So calls, this is a type of option and contract that holds about 100 share per contract of any given stock. Now, if you're a buyer, that gives you the right, not the obligation to buy that 100 shares at the strike price at a certain expiration date. Okay. Now, cause is basically when you're betting that a stock is going to go up. This is on the buy side, you as a buyer. Okay, which is like the most common one. And then we have puts. So puts gives a buyer the right, not the obligation to sell a stock at a certain price. Okay, this is when you're betting that a stock is going to go down. So what happens? You buy some puts when it, when a stock is going down, this contract will increase in value. Okay, so we can add your portfolio, for example, or if you own most of the shares, let's say if you own ABC company and you bought it at hundred dollars, but then, oh, you found that the market is going to start tumbling. Okay. So you bought some, some, uh, some puts at the strike price of a hundred dollars and then boom, the market just dumped. And then now your, your shares, the hundred shares that you bought a hundred dollars are now the stock price is down to $80. Well, guess what? You bought that insurance, which it was your put contract that now you can exercise even though the shares are only $80 in the market, but you can exercise it at $100. You can sell those 100 shares at $100, okay? So um, that's pretty, and the reason why you might, but how, how did that make sense that I can sell 100 shares at $100, at $100 if it's only right now in the market for $80? But remember, that guy that sold you that put option now has the obligation of buying it from you because you have the right to sell those shares at $100. So that's uh, just a quick, quick, quick uh, explanation on like calls and puts. Cover calls, okay. So now this is us being on the seller side. I wanna, I own a lot of shares of Foresight, for example. Let's say, um, and I, look, so on Robinhood, I have 6,700 6, shares. Each 100 shares, it's one contract. So I could say, okay, um, I want to sell, let's say, one contract at a strike price of $22.50, okay? And this is, the, is going to be the expiration date, and I'm going to collect this premium, okay? So I collect this premium. It goes automatically to my buying power, so I can do whatever I want to. I could sell it. I could withdraw it. I could buy another stock. I could buy more of Foresight. I could do whatever. But it's not going to show automatically on it's not going to reflect automatically on your portfolio balance and the reason why i'll show you in a second if the stock if the shares freaking goes up so much it may get assigned and then you're going to have to let it go at a whatever strike price you wrote the contract for and that's going to be the biggest risk but then also let's say if you just bought foresight it could go down in value now you could you could get the premium that's good you get that but also because the stock the stock is going down in value, then obviously then the portfolio is going to go down in value as well. And then and then we have the cash secure puts, which I'll make another video on that because um, it's a it's a it, you could use it. It's a, you could do a pretty good job if you really want to buy stock. Okay, you're not really 100 percent sure if it's going to go down. You could buy you could pick a a lower strike price. You know if it goes down and gets exer exercised, it, then boom you buy it at a lower strike price and then you have you collected a premium already. So I could get into more details on that. Alrighty, so let's go into Robinhood real quick. All right, so we can see that um right now my portfolio balance uh, Robinhood only again. It's uh fifty seven thousand five hundred dollars. It's up to twenty four dollars today because of crypto. I do hold some cryptos. Um, 
and and just a little bit because I do have more in a an action a crypto exchange. Um, so this is my buying power. Okay, guys. So my buying power right now it says that I have a available margin, which I barely use margin, guys. But um, brokerage cash, which is four thousand one hundred twenty dollars. So most of this actually came from the sale of the um the the, the cover calls. Okay. So let me explain. So let's say right now I have one hundred shares available because I sold sixty six contracts. So I have one hundred shares available to actually sell the cover calls. So how would how would you do it? You go to trade trade options okay right now we don't have i had a i had a question on uh, one of my um comments the subscriber asked me um how do i pick my my prices well it was pretty simple for me i don't want to have the chance of like having this to um actually ex exercise you know just because again i'm not really trying to sell my shares so i went to to april 16th the maximum was 20. Um, i'm looking at the top it was and then May twenty first it started twenty two dollars and fifty cents and I went to like November which it, it just came out but it's up to twelve dollars and fifty cents and I don't want that okay I wouldn't want that so August is twenty two dollars and fifty cents as well but it was too kind of too far so I was like okay um, back when I sold it so when I actually sold it it was actually way more than thirty thirty five dollars per contract you might you might be saying Eric but it so if it was more and now it's less, that's bad for you. No, it's actually kind of good because now with time, contract will go down, especially if the stock is not really doing anything. Uh, the, the value of the contract will go down. So if I ever want to buy all this contract back, okay, so nobody has control of my of my shares, then I could do it so while even while profiting, okay? So, all right, so let's go back. So how did I do it? So you have to make sure that right, you're not under buy, you undersell, and then you call. And if you want to sell uh, cash secure puts, you could just switch it to ca uh, cash secure, uh, secure puts. But that's not what we're talking about today. So let's say I wanted to go to May 21st. This is the strike price. And then I wanted to sell a cover call right here for 17 because remember, I don't want to. I don't want to have the chance to like, have this thing exercise. Because if you go down here, and let's say and buy a, uh, and sell a cover call below the strike price, it's almost guaranteed that you're gonna have to sell your shares at five dollars. That doesn't make sense to me. And even though you're collecting three hundred dollars, you know, per contract. So what would you do? Would you go and and pick? I would pick. Let's say. Right now, just for just for example, I'll pick the seventeen dollars and fifty cents, right? And then it says one hundred shares available right there on top. You can do you could do one share and then see how it says minimum credit sixty dollars. As soon as it gets filled, so it has the bid price and has the ask price, it's pretty it's pretty right in the middle for sixty, so it most likely will get filled if we were open today. So at sixty dollars, it says minimum credit. So keep it Keep a close attention to that. Because it's a credit, it's gonna go directly to your buying power. Let's say you do the, the bid, you go ahead and, and do the 60 cents, and then you review, go ahead, whoop. It says right there on the bottom, you're agreeing to sell 100 shares of Foresight at $17.50 per share on or before May 21st. If you aren't if you aren't asked to sell Foresight, by then you keep your collateral and the full $60 credit. So the reason why I say they say that is remember. The contract when we sold it, it was worth was sixty or sixty dollars, right? So we keep the sixty dollars, and then it will show up kind of like this. Uh, let me go back to the options. It will show up right here as one contract. So ignore the sixty-six contracts right now. I'll, I'll say one contract minus sixty. It's not because you're down sixty dollars. You're really not down sixty dollars. You already collected a sixty dollars on on your portfolio. It's not gonna reflect that you actually made money, because well, technically it washes it it washes each other out because um because it's still the same value. But when two things can happen, and this is the thing that you don't see when when you sell shares on a uh, company, when you sell when you sell when you sell a company share, like it's gone. Somebody already bought it. It's gone. There's no contract, so you don't have to see anything. Now, and this one is a contract, so you have the obligation at one point to actually like sell the shares. So this is the reason why you would um you would actually have this under your screen. So keep in mind right now. So let's say it it goes down to. So let's say now it comes out and it shows that hey, um, you did collect the sixty the sixty dollars and now this option, it's worth let's say negative sixty to you. Why is that? Because if you want to take control back, you have to pay. You have to go ahead and buy another call to kind of like get it back. So it's 
and you're gonna break even. Now let's say time goes on, and then the the call option, the 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 cover call now it's it's worth a little bit less and less and less and less. And at one point it goes it's worth only minus thirty. That means you can take you could literally buy that back for thirty dollars and keep the other thirty dollars because you initially collected sixty dollars. And in my case, so let's see what's happening right now. So I told you before that I had collected. I'm gonna show you right here. I had collected, see, two thousand three hundred ten dollars and two thousand one hundred forty five dollars, and you can see on top one hundred dollars. So more than um, what is that? Two thousand five hundred dollars, let's say. We can see now that it says my total return is two thousand one hundred forty five dollars with the money that I collected, which is the four thousand five hundred something, minus the value of the contract, which is less now because it hasn't been doing much. It's actually been going down. I can go ahead and buy all those contract back and take control and I will keep $2,145, okay? You know, and then it will it will reflect better on your portfolio value, okay? Um but right away when you sell a cover call, you won't see that oh, your, your portfolio value is not going to really go up. It could actually start kind of looking like it's going to go down. But remember, once it gets to the expiration date, as long as it's not at the at the strike price and it doesn't get assigned it's gonna expire worthless okay you you have your premiums you have the control back of your shares and then it's gonna expire worthless and obviously there's the other way around that hey it's in the money now which you're gonna start seeing hey i'm losing freaking money um and it's gonna cost you more money to actually take the control back of your shares and it could get exercised and then that's why because it, it doesn't have to get exercised by let's say the strike the strike day i mean the expiration day which is um may what 26th or 21st i can't remember uh what is it yeah 21st um because it could happen anytime let's say four sides freaking goes to 30 dollars in a week they could exercise this and then because they have it at 22 dollars 50 cents and they could sell it right back at 30 dollars you know something like that um but one thing we got to know is that the chance of, re of um, a, prof a profit. So if I go back to trade options and go to May 21st and go all the way up there, it says chance of profit. Okay, there you go. It says 96.66%. So I took less. Pre I could have taken up a pores of like $10,000 in premiums if I wanted to. But then I'll be more subject to, to the risk of me selling my shares. And I didn't want that. And right now I'm looking at the 96% of chances of profit. Damn, if I'm freaking unlucky like that and at the and at three point whatever chance of a profit, then well, I guess I deserve selling. <laughs> that person who bought it deserve actually having my shares. So remember, when you start writing out contracts, you are in control. You're the one writing out. Okay, um, you could take more risk. I could go ahead and collect more, and more, and more premium if it, if I write a. Uh, a strike price of like I say twelve dollars and fifty cents or even fifteen dollars, but Foresight has hit like twelve dollars before, you know, and going back to twelve dollars is not really that big deal. I know they're gonna go back there. It's just the matter is when, okay? It could happen next week. It could happen next month. It can happen in three months. We don't know, and I don't really take that gamble right now. Okay, I would I would rather sell be forced to sell at twenty two dollars and fifty cents if if it happens to hit that quickly, then um then let it go for like something that I could have just let go, you know, without even like a contract or anything like that. But uh, please ask me more questions about it because this is something I'm like as I'm going I'm learning more because of this channel like I'm learning more and more and more in different strategies that is actually like helped me out helping my portfolio in the long term because think about it guys if you can do this really well and then you can cash in some premiums it will add up let's say even every three months or every two months you can cash in like three thousand or whatever it will add up at the end of the year you know so that's and that's the goal right now i i'm really not trying to lose too much money or even trying to like day trade and things like that i'm i'm never i've never i was never into a lot of day trading by the way i started a, a challenge which is going all right I, i'll update you guys on it later but I'm I'm all about like trying to grow the, my money long term, okay? But we know that my portfolio right now is very risky, you know. Um, it's weighted mostly on foresight. It was never like that before, you know. Foresight was like a, you know, it was nothing comparing to like all the other positions. It's just foresight grew so much, and I saw the opportunity while it was going up, and I started like selling the other the other um stocks and 
pumping more money into foresight which it worked out but and now i got into what it is right now but the good thing is it's like i do have other portfolios that can kind of like average out the risk and stuff like that but um yeah hopefully i was able to show you how to sell some cover calls because that was my main goal and like the the reasons behind it and like the thoughts about it and, and how i think about it but um let me know if i if i wasn't clear enough let me know i'll try to make another video on this um so uh, guys that's very much it thanks so much for watching this video and i'll see you next time Bye bye